Today we're going to show you a practical way to perform one of the most important parts of the neurological assessment, the Glasgow Coma Scale. If you want to learn about all things neurosurgery, don't forget to subscribe to the Brain Book channel. The Glasgow Coma Scale was developed in 1974 by Graham Teasdale and Brian Jeanette. Every neurosurgeon will use it to assess a patient's conscious level, whether it's after an acute brain injury or if we're monitoring a patient in the intensive care unit. We've got the awesome CLO here with us today who's going to be our patient, and I'll show you how to do this quickly and easily. When you approach the patient at the bedside, you can get a lot of information about what to expect. If you're in the intensive care unit and the patient is intubated, for example, they may have drugs on board that are going to affect the GCS scale. If you're seeing a patient on a Friday night who's been attacked outside of a bar, they might have a lot of alcohol on board. This is seriously going to affect your examination, so it's really good to know beforehand. The GCS rates a patient's conscious level according to three components what their eyes are seeing, what they're saying, which is the verbal, and what they can do with their muscles, the motor bit. Each of those components is split into separate criteria. There are four for eyes, five for verbal, and six for the motor score. A normal response is the highest or best number, and the lowest is no response. The best score that you can achieve is 15, and the lowest is three, not zero, never zero. Walk to the bedside and introduce yourself. Shout if you need to. Sometimes people might have hearing aids that have run out of batteries, or they've had skull fractures causing damage to their ears. Sometimes your patient will already be sitting up with their eyes open, having a cup of tea. If they open their eyes, then that is to sound. You can grab a pen or some kind of blunt instrument and apply pressure to the nail bed, starting slowly and increasing the intensity until they open their eyes or until you've put on enough pressure. You need to do this for at least 10 seconds. Remember, you're not trying to hurt them, but you shouldn't be a soft touch. If they open their eyes to pressure, then you say to pressure. So far, not so bad, right? If they don't open their eyes, it's none. Just remember that if both of their eyes are swollen shut from trauma, or a particularly horrendous wasp attack, for example, then you need to say that the eyes are not testable, or NT. Next, we're going to assess the verbal response. You don't need to go into a full AMTS, but just start talking to them, ask them if they know what their name is, where they are, and what month it is. If they get all of that right, then they're orientated. If they're not orientated and they're speaking in phrases or relatively complete sentences, then you can mark them down as confused. If they're talking gibberish, single words, most often swearing at you, that's words. If they're moaning or groaning and you can't make out what they're saying, then that's sounds. Things are starting to get a bit concerning by this point. If they've got a tube down their throat helping them breathe, it's kind of not testable, so put down NT. When you're testing the motor score, you need to ask your patient to perform a two-step action, either grasping and releasing your fingers or opening a mouth and sticking out their tongue. If they can do that, they are obeying commands. You cannot use the peripheral stimulus alone to test the motor response, so you need to do something called a central stimulus. The first thing that we're gonna show you is the trapezius pinch. Here, squeeze for up to 10 seconds and assess what their best response is. If the trapezius is not giving you any response, then you need to go to the supraorbital notch and use your thumb. Again, do this for 10 seconds and get the best response. If they move their arm or hand up above the clavicle towards the stimulus, that's localizing to pain. If the arm bends and moves rapidly away from the body and the stimulus, that's normal flexion. Abnormal flexion is when the elbow bends slowly and the arm comes across the body. Extension is when the elbows start to extend and that's again a really bad sign. And if they're paralyzed, always put it down as NT. And remember to always make sure that you get the best response. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and you find it really useful. 
Pop a comment down below if there's anything else that you want to know about the Glasgow Coma Scale. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube so you don't miss out on any other videos like this. If you want us to keep making videos like this for you so you can learn about all things neurosurgical for free, check out our Patreon where you can support us on a monthly basis. We've got some cool rewards like early access to videos, polls to let us know what you would like to see, and we'd really, really appreciate your support. So the link's down below and hope to see you during the next Brain Book video. See you later.